In part one, we discussed the, the value of using a phytase, not just in destroying IP6, but also in breaking down IP4 and IP3, which are also in their own right anti-nutrients. And it's only when you remove IP4 and IP3, as well as IP6, that you see the major benefits of superdosing. In this part, what I want to discuss is what happens when we break down IP3 to IP2 and then IP2 to IP1. Since IP1 is a substrate for the animal's own endogenous alkaline phosphatases, and with these enzymes, the animal can take off the last phosphorus from IP1, producing inositol. And that is the focus of this talk. And you can see the more phytase that is fed, the higher the level of inositol generated in the gizzard. So there clearly is inositol provision when we use a phytase. Interesting, if you look at the, the table associated with this graph, you can see a very highly positive correlation between the concentration of inositol found in the gizzard and the performance of the animal as measured by gain or FCR. So it's suggesting the more inositol we generate, the better the FCR, the better the gain of the animal. So superdosing is not simply breaking down IP6, it's not simply breaking down IP4 and IP3, all of which are anti-nutrients. It's also producing inositol, which is a nutrient which appears to be required by the broiler chicken and by the piglet in modern day diets. Not all phytases can do this, simply because they are not as equally efficient at breaking down IP6, IP4 and IP3 rapidly enough to provide the IP1 so that the inositol can be produced by the animal in the gut.